Hello everyone, Alec Elcher the Side Quest Gamer here, and it's finally snowing outside. It's all cold and miserable, so I figured why not play a game that suits the cold winter theme. So I picked Ice Climbers for the NES. And of all the NES games that I've heard about, whether it be from Smash Brothers or really just word of mouth, I never got the hype of Ice Climbers. And by hype, I don't mean hype generated by the fans. I mean hype generated by Nintendo themselves. It's not any secret that when the groundbreaking NES console came out in 1985 in North America, it came out with a vast library of 18 launch titles. Some were released in Japan before, but it still doesn't change the fact that Americans had so many options during its launch. I haven't played all of the NES launch titles, but I have played a good portion of them, with most of them ranging from decent to pretty good in terms of quality, and unfortunately, Ice Climbers is not one of them, and I'm not sure why they get represented heavily in the Super Smash Bros. series. Developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and published by Nintendo, Ice Climbers managed to sell 1.5 million copies according to VG Charts, but I'm not sure if it's talking about the initial 1985 release or the total of the initial and re-release sales. From the title screen, there are two ways to play the game, the single player and the multiplayer. From the title screen, you can also choose which stage you start off in, with the stages getting progressively harder and harder. This is a vertically designed game where your titular ice climbers either being Popo or Popo and Nana depending if you chose single player or multiplayer respectively, they have to get to the top of the stage in order to go to the next one while avoiding enemies as well as bottomless pits that form when you're on higher ground. There are breakable blocks you have to jump towards in order to break them and jump through the opening as well as an assortment of obstacles like conveyor belt platforms and moving ones you have to be mindful of when you're jumping. When you do make it close to the top, you then engage in a minigame where you have the opportunity to collect all the vegetables if you want bonus points, and of course you can touch the bird before time is up to gain 5,000 additional points. If you want the highest score, now's the opportunity to do so. With all that being said, it sounds like a simple, harmless premise of a video game you can play for 10 to 20 minutes, but there is one glaring issue that unfortunately ruins the experience for me. The controls. The controls are garbage. All there really is to it is move left or right, or jump up left or up right. How could you possibly mess this up? Well, the jumps are extremely stiff, and if you hope there's any way to maneuver your character in midair, you would be wrong. And sadly, these control issues make this conceptually sound game into a massive slog of a time. And as you progress in the game, these control issues will become more apparent. I don't mind when in the original Donkey Kong arcade game, Mario had just as stiff jumps, if not more stiff, but at least he got some distance where you're sure you'll land in the desired area. Not to mention the game was designed with the stiff controls in mind. Mind. Ice Climbers, however, didn't feel like it had the stiff controls in mind, and with not much variation in the later level designs, it's not like the game gets any better from the beginning. In the end, I get why even NES buffs don't look at this game as fondly as they do with games like Super Mario Bros. It's just the broken jumping mechanics that ruin the experience for me. I know Ice Climbers has its fans out there, but forgive me if I'm not one of them. I personally don't really like this game, if you couldn't tell already. So it really begs the question, if people like me don't really like this game and all the people I talk to are either indifferent or don't like this game like I do, why does it appear to be hyped up so much? The answer is that Nintendo themselves are generating the hype. When I mean Nintendo generates the hype of this game, I mean that, for one, the box art is invitational, showing that there might be a quality game inside upon initial launch. There were also the NES Classics GBA re-releases, implying that the game was so good to warrant a re-release, their appearance in Super Smash Bros. Melee, and of course the several re-releases on the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console. But Melee was probably what sold Ice Climbers to my generation of gamers. We looked at the trophies with the labels of their first appearance and sought out a copy for the Game Boy Advance or Wii Virtual Console, and there's really nothing wrong with Melee celebrating the legacy of something like Ice Climbers, as it was one of the original 18 games. Regardless of what I think of it and others think, there is some historical significance of Ice Climbers. So if you're wondering why it has the legacy it has today, these are the few hypotheses I propose of how it became a recognizable Nintendo game. 
With that being said, I think this game is just a very mediocre title. Not good, not bad, I'm just very indifferent to this game. Despite finding the graphics very charming for its time, I can't help but feel underwhelmed by this vertical platformer developed by Nintendo themselves. There are a lot worse games out there, sure, but there's definitely a lot better games to play. If you do want to play it, it's on the NES Mini, so I'd say play it only if you're interested in getting the NES Mini, because there's 29 other games to play if Ice Climbers is not your cup of tea. But I do think that you should not get it on the virtual console, because $5 is asking way too much for an experience you'll just play for 5 to 10 minutes and never play it again, unless you're that much of an Ice Climbers fan. But otherwise, I don't recommend it to a lot of people. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember to stay awesome.